please welcome award-winning documentarian, Young Chang. So warm and welcoming. You, and you just made it, right? I, you I, just landed. I, I just jumped off the airplane. Oh, that's and right. my what an ordeal. Like I, I was telling everyone to, my whole crew, I was telling them to pace yourselves, pace yourselves, and already it's begun. The, the madness has started. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I got, I got kicked off my flight uh, because of, uh, well, the customs had a little issue. I had Really? To, I had some uh, merchandise, but not, not for commercial merchandise, just, you know, a little, I brought some toques with me, and... For those of you that don't know what toques are. Do you know what toques are? (laughs) Not a lot of you do. Toques are the Canadian word for, like, they could be anything, right? We can make it up now. Uh, Yeah, they're for hats. They're they're sort of like, yeah, like like wool hats that you wear with the, yeah. Yeah. And you so brought some toques and they and got you got they arrested or something? I, 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 they wouldn't let me bring in at about. I had about fifty toques with me in oh. my suitcase. What were you going to do with these toques? I was going to give you one and oh. I was going to pass them around. Really? And, yeah, I was going to do that. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. So what happened? Did they was, confiscate the toques? They told me we're that, not talking about your film, by the way. <laughs> you want, you want to <laughs> keep gotta, talking? We got to get back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get back. But essentially, what happened is I gave them to the WestJet airline um, employees, and they're all wearing these hats right now <laughs> in Montreal. That's not so bad. That's right. great. Yeah. <laughs> um, why a film about boxing? Why a film about boxing? Well, I, that's a good question. I read, I, you know, Joyce Carol Oates wrote a really good book called On Boxing. And in that book, she talks about how writing about boxing is really about writing about yourself. And I would say that uh, for me, the, the experience of making this film is about uh, confronting a lot of personal uh, st- angsts right. and stories. And, and for me, it was really about this uh, s- feeling of uh, a fear of failure, and I think uh, the process of making this movie addressed a lot of these 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 feelings that I've been uh, in encountering. So certainly, making a second film was part of it. Oh, it's, uh, the, it's interesting. The popular notion outside China is that it's a place of martial artists, and and indeed, boxing was banned in China, right? That's for, right. For, for years, it's flourishing now. We see this. Why is boxing so in your film? Why is it so popular? Boxing is a, it's sort of a burgeoning sport right now. I would say that uh, what I found unique about it was here's a sport that was banned uh, up until 1987 uh, because it was considered too capitalist, too Western, too violent. Mm. And how unique to be able to invert that uh, into a story about modern China where you have... Uh, a society grown up with the collectivist sort of notion of uh, of uh, s- uh, of society uh, confronting the issue of the individual, and and boxing is all about the individual fighting for yourself. Yeah, and uh, and that's what struck me about it. Yeah. The, in in China Heavyweight, you follow this boxing coach and two young amateur boxers with Olympic dreams. Is it the sport of boxing these athletes are passionate about, or the opportunities that success could give them? Well, that's a great question. I think that uh, for, for, for these kids, it's an opportunity to climb up the ladder, to get out of their social situation. A lot of them are from tobacco farming families. And, uh, and their futures, if, if they didn't have this recruitment potential to go to this high school in the city to study boxing, to practice boxing, then they would probably end up being farmers. And so a lot of them want to get out of that. And that, that's the age-old story about boxing in a way too. It's often about uh, uh, the underprivileged trying to fight their way out. Speaking of which, uh, I understand the former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson (laughs) was in China at the same time that you were making this documentary about boxing and you actually ran into him. I did. What well, was, what was that like? Well, it was it was sort of a pilgrimage. So he was in northern China promoting boxing in Tianjin. Oh, you ran into him <laughs> by going and finding him. <laughs> right, right. It was it was something that I said crew, and I had my Chinese crew with me, and I said let's do this. We got to meet Mike Tyson. He's got to come to this little town in in south central China, population three hundred thousand, which is a tiny little village. We got to teach these kids to how to box, and you're going to inspire them. So I camped out for for three days. And the only thing that got his attention was this little puppy that I found in the garbage <laughs> in China. And his name is Laji. Laji means trash. And he heard this dog yelping uh, the last day that we had to pack up and go. And he came over and sat down with me 
And I, I knelt down on the floor, kind of like a kid listening to a story, and showed him images from the film, and he was very enthusiastic really? about it. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was a, it was a quite a moment. I mean, he's a legend. You, you kneeled before him like he was. I knelt like, before him like the, he was like the great Yoda. emperor. Yeah, yeah, yeah the great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson. I, <laughs> well, well, that's 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 an intru- that's an, an experience of a lifetime. It, there, it really uh, is. Is it important, young, for for you to consistently be an interpreter? I'm thinking about the Yangtze, and I'm thinking of this mm-hmm. film, an interpreter of modern China to Western audiences. Or could you see yourself compelled by entirely different stories in the future? I'm certainly compelled by other stories. I think what drove me to this one was the idea of this kind of making an action film and 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 working with this, uh, you know, I grew up watching kung fu movies and boxing movies and this east-west sort of connection was very, very, very strong for me. So it just so happened that this was perfect. Why but not? you're becoming an ambassador of sorts for us, right? Like, a, you know, it's, it's through you that we have a portal into what China is like in many ways. I think there's a, a different perspective that I can bring to observing China. Someone that is an outsider, uh, but also sort of an insider, having grown up in a Chinese culture with my parents and, uh, and having the capability to speak the language, uh, kind of allows me a way to step inside and, and, and step outside and, and kind of be a voyeur and, and watch uh-huh. things unfolding. Uh, that being said, it's also, for me, a learning experience to be able to learn about myself, learn about uh, the Chinese culture, to learn about uh, j- just this, this whole I- identity of, of being Chinese uh, connected through contemporary stories. And that's what really drives me. It's a really interesting film and a moving one. Yeah, the, the, your previous doc, Up the Yangtze, huge success. You got critical thumbs up, you know, Tarantino and <laughs> Isabella Rossellini gave you the sum, thumbs up and won awards. Like, given all that attention, how much pressure do you feel when you're releasing your second feature film at Sundance? <laughs> The, the pressure is there. It's hovering. Uh, you got to let it go. I've learned to be really zen about it. You know, just go with the flow. Don't don't let it hit you too deeply. But obviously, we're in competition here. The statistics, without your toques. Without my toques. <laughs> yes. The the competition is you know you, you hear the statistics. Thirty six out of seventeen hundred films have been of do- feature documentaries are programmed in this uh, right. in, the, in competition. Yeah. That's it's astounding. That's enough it's for a me. Huge that's success an honor. to just get that's in. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, and and uh, you know you you just you just have to g- get through it. <laughs> but do you feel like a um, like an author who's, who's coming off a bestseller and and <laughs> can only judge their success by having another bestseller or a, or a band that wants to do as well as their last record? I mean, is is that in you? Can you afford to be feel that way? I, I think you come in with a little more perspective on the experience, uh, perhaps a little more sagacious about the process of releasing a movie. Mm. Uh, and and I think in that way it's it's you know I feel like the the ambassador of that process a little bit to, for the young indie game filmmakers and I, and you know hopefully we can have some conversation about the process of pacing yourself right. which I am not doing so uh, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, um, you know yes uh, it's scary but I, and I w- hope that everyone gets a chance to see the movie I think. It's different. I think it feels like a fiction film, and I think that's that was what I was striving for in, in making this movie. It's great to see you Good here see you. in Salt Lake City. Thank you for this. Congrats on the film. Thank you so much. Yeah. Montreal filmmaker Young Chang, director of China Heavyweight, a look at the recruitment of young boxing talent from remote rural areas of China. China Heavyweight makes its world premiere here at Sundance this Sunday.